Hello, good evening, and welcome to the SOFA series. I'm Erin Selvey. I'm the Director of Education and Training for UFCW Local 832. And tonight, we're going to be talking about some really interesting things. But right before I get to that, I do want to take a moment to do our land recognition. UFCW Local 832 acknowledges that we are gathered and work each day on the ancestral lands of the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene people and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our offices are located in Treaty 1 and 2 territory, and our work extends into Treaties 3, 4, and 5. We recognize the injustices done to the Indigenous people of this land and are committed to supporting and collaborating with Indigenous communities in the spirit of truth and reconciliation. And one of the things that we think is important to be doing in that spirit is to have a better understanding of Indigenous culture. And tonight, we have a really special guest who's going to help us with that. Eric Flett is the uh, elder for UFCW National. Uh, he advises us on all things to do with Indigenous culture. He also is a former member who worked at St. Boniface Hospital for a number of years and has been a facilitator at the UFCW Training Center, where he developed a uh, the course that we're going to talk about tonight. So Eric, thank you so much for joining us. And tonight we will be talking about the seven teachings, but Eric, I know you're going to get us started in a traditional manner. Yes, hello, bonjour. Um, yes, hello, thank you for welcoming me. My Spirit name is comes with the Northern Lights, and I belong to the Brown Bear Clan of the Ojibwe people of Ebb and Flow First Nation, Treaty Two territory. But today I reside in Treaty One territory. So when I start, <clears throat> I always um, do a smudge, and what I use is sage, and we use that sage to smudge ourselves to smudge our area and cleanse it of any negativity and all the our sacred items that we have, we use that sage to cleanse, to cleanse ourselves. And we also, um, <clears throat> it's a good way to start ceremony, is to start in a good way. And that this helps us uh, start in a good way, helps us focus, helps us speak the truth as well. <clears throat> Yeah. I'm running out of room. All right, so when I smudge, I always, uh, just for those of you who have not smudged before, I always smudge four times, <clears throat> and that represents the four directions. So we smudge, we start in the east, and everything goes clockwise, east, south, west, north. <clears throat> me. And the way I was taught, um, and this is how I understand it, we cleanse ourselves, but also we're asking grandmothers and grandfathers, those are our ancestors who have passed on and helped guide us from the spirit world. We ask them to come and be with us and give us guidance, <clears throat> to give us the strength and the courage to do that anything that we need to do. Um, and now the way I was told is we have grandmothers and grandfathers that sit in each of the four cardinal directions. So, and they're the ones that we ask to give us that strength and that guidance. <clears throat> I'm just gonna... So when I smudge, I always smudge my head cleanse my head, but also I smudge my eyes, my mouth, and my ears. And while I'm doing it, um, if you don't know anything about smudging, all you see is somebody going like this, and it's like, oh, yeah, good, great, good to go. But the protocol, the way I was taught, is when we smudge, we're praying at the same time. <clears throat> we're asking those grandmothers and grandfathers to come be with us, cleanse us, and give us the strength and courage to do what we need to do. And we're praying to those four directions. Give me pretty much smudge my eyes, give me good vision to see good things, right? My ears help me listen 
in a good way, hear the good things. My voice helped me speak in a good way. Not to see, hear, or speak about that negativity or to focus on it, right? Smudge my whole body, smudge my heart. <clears throat> and then what I do is I smudge my, my this is my ribbon shirt. <clears throat> so my traditional ribbon shirt, I always uh, smudge before I put on. And whenever we do ceremony and we use uh, our sacred items, we have to smudge them first and cleanse them to make sure that it's whatever you're using is in a good space and that we are in a good space. All right. <clears throat> so for all of you out there, I'll give you a little smudge to the camera. Plus. <laughs> yeah. Take that in. Sir, that is the, is this, is the, I think you've got a blanket behind you, or maybe a quilt. Is that significant to what we're doing today? That is a, a star blanket. So that star blanket is. <clears throat> There's a lot of different teachings behind there. And the way I was taught is uh, this star blanket um, represents our people. Like traditionally, the way we're taught in our um, creation story that we are star people. So we come from the stars. So those four colors, red, white, black, and yellow, are representative of the four peoples on Mother Earth, the way I was taught. Okay, this is the way I was taught. So there's the red man, the white man, the black man, and the yellow man. And we all belong to a direction in that medicine wheel. And so that star blanket, they come in many different colors. Like people have them personalized, like, like myself. See my shirt, I got red, yellow, green, and turquoise blue are, are my colors for my spirit name. They're my colors that represent me and they belong to me. And they're, uh, it's my, uh, my help. That's where I get my help from. Right, my helpers <clears throat> and each color represents different things so i've seen many different colors in the star blankets but yeah our traditional story that i was taught the creation story is there's the physical world and the spirit world so that spirit world where we come from um it is said there's a doorway in in the sky that's what it's called it's like a there's a hole in the sky and around that hole, that doorway, there's seven stars there. And they call them, it's the Pleiades, they call it in Greek, or the seven sisters, whatever, whatever their name is. Um, those seven stars in the middle is that doorway to the spirit world. And originally, that's how we were taught, that that's where the first spirit came from, to come here on once um, God gives you money do, the way we say it. The loving God created Mother Earth, then brought us here so that's why we're called the star people so when someone's born they wrap them in the star blanket but when someone passes they also wrap them in the star blanket because now they're going back to the spirit world and sometimes it's an honor given to someone who's not indigenous i've seen that happen too where you wrap someone in the star blanket <clears throat> i I've, I've seen them and it's um to me it always goes back to my culture and connection right like i said those four races we're all brothers and sisters because we, in our creation story, we were all created from Mother Earth. So we're all brothers and sisters. And <clears throat> whether you're white, black, red, or yellow, or a mix in between there, right? We're all brothers and sisters. So originally, we all came from the same place. So it's like we're welcoming, welcoming them into our family, acknowledging that they're, they are one of our brothers or sisters when they wrap them in the star blanket. Uh -huh. Now, you and I have the tendency to talk on and on, and there is so much to talk about, but I want to make sure we get to the thing that we brought you here today to talk about. And I'm going to share my screen just for a moment so people uh, can see what it is that we're going to be discussing. So there is, you know, endless amounts of things we could talk about in Indigenous culture, but we're going to try to focus today on the seven teachings. And I have learned about these from you, but I think um, this will be really interesting for people to understand these seven teachings and what you've taught me is that they can be applied to your life every day. So maybe we can start by going through them and talk about the one at the top, and that is love. 
love. Yes, this is funny. You know, when we, when we talk about seven teachings, uh, usually people think of them outwardly because love, right? I, I ask people, like I'll ask you, what is love, Aaron? Love to me is I, I mostly think of my children, and it's 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 um it's a sacrifice that I would make for them. It's uh, putting their needs before mine. It's um, their happiness is important to me. It, it's a lot of sacrifice and giving is how I think of love, particularly from a mother's point of view. Yeah, yeah. And to me, that's, yeah, like the same, same idea, right? Love, what is love? Like, how do you explain love to somebody who's never heard the word before? Like a young person, right? Just what feels good in your heart, right? Because um, that's where that love comes from. It's supposed to come from your heart. <clears throat> and when I when I talk to people about the teachings, it's always outwardly, but go inwardly first, then go outwardly. So inwardly, what is love? Like you, you have we have to learn how to love ourselves for who we are as a human being, right? If you can love yourselves, then you can love other people, right? Makes sense. I think when you talk about us all coming from the stars, then it does make sense that you love yourself as you are because who you are is greater than just this body you've been given and just this yes. place on earth that it's a bigger connection than that when you speak about love right and and having love like like i say everything is connected if you can learn to learn the culture learn the teachings you can find connections to everything right and that love why shouldn't we love all our brothers and sisters right because they're yeah i know growing up right have fights with the, the siblings stuff like that but you know you got to learn to love not just yourself but what's that golden rule do unto others right oh right but then yeah. that also means you better love yourself first before yes that doesn't gotta love yourself first so turn it inwardly love yourself love yourself for who, who you are then you can love other people right now and, each of the seven teachings is also represented by an animal so yes. what animal represents love? The eagle. Megize or Ginyu. <clears throat> one's golden eagle, one's bald eagle. Um, they represent love because the way I was taught that our eagle is the one that flies highest. So Yujimani do, the loving God is up there. So the eagle flies highest, it's the strongest, it sees the farthest, all that stuff. But um so it's closest to creator. So that's how so I was. By loving, that's how you are behaving closer to the creator. You are mimicking the creator if you're <clears throat> if you're loving. Not not mimicking, but um. <clears throat> so the eagle, like with the like the wing hair, the eagle fan I have, we use those to traditionally smoke our pipes. We have eagle feathers on it. Not everybody does. But it's, it's the way I was taught. My first pipe I was given, I had an eagle feather on it. Um, and when we pray, that feather symbolically takes our prayers. The smoke goes up, but the smoke can only go so far, the way I understand it. So that eagle feather takes it all the way up. Symbolically, it takes it up to Gizhimani Du so that Gizhimani Du can hear our prayers. Is that why you're holding it now? Because we're talking about ceremony? Yes, I always, I always do when we do ceremony, but um, <clears throat> my fan, there's so many teachings behind the eagle feather, and just one, one teaching is when you're having, um, people know sharing circles, right? They've heard it. We're having a sharing circle. Well, there's a sharing circle, there's a talking circle, uh, a learning circle. There's all different types of sharing circles or circles that we have. When we do a talking circle, we use an eagle fan because an eagle fan has that, um, <clears throat> because of the sacredness of the eagle and what it represents, that love, when you're holding it, you should be able to only be able to speak the truth. Ah, so, so as soon as it's in your hands, that's your responsibility is to speak the truth. Yes, yes. Um, and it's, <clears throat> it's like in court, you know, when you go to court and you have to, like, I've, I've never been to court. Put your hand on the Bible thing and swear. 
Oh. Yeah, I swear to tell the truth. Well, if you go to someone who's been hurt, like in residential schools by the, the church and that all that stuff, but they're going to put their hand on the Bible. Are they going to have that much importance on it? If they were to put an ego fan in there, now let's not let this get out there. <laughs> but, but if you put an ego fan, then people feel their truth. Yes, the importance of it. It's, it's, it's important, right? The sacredness of the feather and what all the ego represents. So yeah, we carry that. And so like I'm carrying that today. So whatever I'm asked, however it goes, um, I'll do my best to try and speak my truth, right? And how I've learned certainly always make it easy for people to ask questions and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. If we move on to the next one, the next one is respect. And I know that you mean respect outward, but respect inward as well. But how do we apply that in Indigenous teaching? Mm -hmm. Having respect for yourself. Like, I know some people will go out and <clears throat> some people like to make a fool of themselves just to get a laugh. Or I know um, some people, when I was younger, Indigenous people would make jokes about Indigenous people, other Indigenous people, when they're surrounded by white people, <clears throat> so that they can get a laugh from these white people, but at the expense of their own people, right? To me, that's not respecting the other Indigenous people that are, you're talking about, but also you're not respecting yourself. If you have to degrade yourself, just to get a laugh to feel like you have to belong and that's not how we should be you should have more respect for yourself but now outwardly you should have more respect for other people which animal represents respect that's the way we say it. uh it's a uh, buffalo buffalo there's a, a teaching long old teaching that says um <clears throat> the people were the community was in a bad way, like basically starving for food. Uh, been a hard winter, whatever the circumstances were. But what they did was they prayed about it. They asked Gajimani Du and the grandmothers and grandfathers uh, to help them. What can they do? So they were they were given the vision of, of to uh, approach the buffalo and ask the buffalo because. The buffalo, <clears throat> the way I understand it, is um, the buffalo had everything that our people needed to survive, except water, right? Water we get from Mother Earth, right? But everything else that we needed, the buffalo provided. So the buffalo, um, they approached the buffalo and asked, um, like they explained that they were having a hard time. They passed tobacco. They asked, what can we do? Um, so they made a deal with the buffalo, actually, for lack of better words. But they did it through ceremony, right? And buffalo um, <clears throat> saw the hard times that the people were having. So buffalo said, we will give of ourselves to help our brothers and sisters. Because Remember what I was saying before about uh, our creation story? We were all created from Mother Earth. So Mother Earth was created first. There's four orders. Mother Earth. Then all the plants and the trees and the grasses and the flowers, then all the animals, all the animals, the ones that fly, the ones in the air, in the sea, in, in the earth, all our four-legged brothers and sisters, and the ones with more legs or less or not, no legs at all. Yep. Um, Got to include everybody. And then we were the fourth order of creation, okay, the the human beings, but we were so closely created after the animals that we were able to converse with the animals at that time. And that, that's why I say like the story, the way I was told, we were able to make that deal with Buffalo for the Buffalo to provide for us because we so were we still show respect to the Buffalo and the Buffalo shows respect to us in that way. Yeah. And yeah. in that way you got food, shelter, clothing, food. really yeah. so many things. From the buffalo. Tools, tools, like whatever they made hammers out of, made weapons out of them. Uh, needles the bladders they would use for um like uh carrying liquid water whatever yeah they had everything they needed in there and how did indigenous people show the respect back to the buffalo by exactly that by, by using, using every it. single piece of the buffalo and not wasting any of it that's another part of that respect right 
we'll use you to help us survive, but at the same time, we won't take more than we need. We'll only take what we need to keep the buffalo going, but we'll also, if you give of yourselves to us, we'll use every little last part of you in a good way to honor and respect what you guys are doing for us. And to protect, I mean, what you're talking about is also protecting the species going forward. And maybe yeah. it wasn't exactly. thought of that way, but knowing that they're, you know, not taking too many of the buffalo, so there would always be buffalo there. Yes. It makes, a, it makes good sense environmentally as well. Right. And not having respect, like when uh, non-Indigenous people came here, wow, it didn't take long, a few years, and they almost wiped out all the buffalo. <clears throat> and it was, that was not a good thing, but. And it's so hard for our people because we put so much respect on the buffalo, right? So yeah, it, that was not easy. <laughs> Next teaching is wisdom. And, you know, I think we probably feel like we know what that means, but what does that mean in terms of your teaching? Yeah, wisdom. What does wisdom mean? To have knowledge on something that has happened in the past, um, right? It's, it's like... Um, <clears throat> it's like a kid they play with a match they burn themselves then they learn right to be careful <laughs> next time <laughs> yep. so we earn we earn that wisdom but over the years you start to learn more and see more and you, you start seeing patterns and then you it's almost like you can see the future right because you said okay okay this is going to happen and this is going to happen and it's not going to turn out well but and that's because you have the wisdom of knowing how those things came together in the past i guess yes Yes, but also there's wisdom just in asking a question, which is, is hard for when you're younger, because if you don't have that wisdom, you don't have that knowledge, what do you do? Go ask an elder. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this growing up. Go ask an elder. It's like, okay, get tobacco and go ask an elder. And that, that wisdom that you're learning without even getting an answer to your question, like ask an elder, well, you're learning out of that wisdom. What you should take away is, from there is, okay, now I got to have respect for this elder, whoever I'm asking, right? Learn you know, that it's, respect. It's interesting because, um, you know, if, if you see indigenous culture, but not just indigenous culture, there's lots of different cultures around the world where elders are very much respected. But mm -hmm. the culture I've grown up in, they aren't. That elders are considered sort of past their time. And it's interesting to me that it's not even the answer so much that was important. It's teaching children that if you have a question, elders have that answer, they have value. That's an important lesson that would be good for, for all society to learn. Yes, right. And, and it's hard even when, even our own young people, when they abuse their parents or grandparents when they're elderly, like just using them for money or whatever. It's, yeah, it's just not a good thing. And for our people, it's that's not the way our people were because traditionally our people were living these seven teachings. So you don't uh, disrespect your elders that way. It's which hard because is the it has the wisdom. Which animal represents wisdom? Uh, a mick is the beaver, and it's because of the teeth. If they don't chew the trees down, their teeth are going to keep growing, and then they won't be able to eat. Then they'll just end up starving. So yeah, they have that knowledge and that that wisdom that, okay, I got to chew trees down, got to chew trees down. But that's what I love. I love something that has more than one use. Yeah. Right? I don't like things for one use, like at least 25 years, my wife said, let's buy a skidoo. And it's like, I don't really care for a skidoo. You're, you're lucky you get to use it for a few months. But I said, no, if we're going to buy something, I want a four wheeler we could use it all year we can have fun we can play but then i can also use it to work right so i love things that have more than one use so that wisdom that beaver uh learned is chewing down the trees right but then also making their homes right beaver lodge making the dams and creating a new ecosystem for other animals to share now, now that's right more than one use but you have a lot of wisdom of knowing where to even build the dam where to where to put the trees in order to make it work to create that ecosystem. So there is a lot of wisdom in the beaver and what it does. There is. And with each teaching, there's not just one teaching, right? There's so many ways you can apply that teaching and look for other teachings in it. 
because <clears throat> I like yeah. If the beaver doesn't chew cheese down, it's gonna starve and die. Okay, but ultimately, what happened was Gijimani Du gave beaver a gift of being able to use those teeth to take down trees because they don't take down just any trees. They they take what they need, right? But also, they're creating their homes, the dams, and creating ecosystem for other animals to live off of. So that wisdom in in that, but also beaver knowing the wisdom that they were given a gift it's not a it wasn't a bad thing that their teeth keep growing if they don't chew it it also it teaches us that you know what i got a gift i should learn how to use it learn what my gift is and use it to help myself but also to benefit the community that's interesting so i mean that obviously can apply to all of us figure out what your gift is and, and the creator's given you a gift, you need to use it because that's how you show respect to a creator too and yourself, I guess. Right, and that's wisdom, right? Learning, yep. understanding that you were given a gift, but then learning about it and then using it in a good way to help the, the whole community benefit. The next one on the list is courage. How do you explain courage in the seven teachings? Uh, this is how I understand courage. Courage um, means that you, you're going to do something that it might hurt you, whether it's physically or mentally, or might even be risky spiritually, but you do it anyways. And even though you have fear, because I don't believe people when they say, oh, yeah, I wasn't scared. Yeah, there's a little bit of fear there, but that's how I understand courage. It's doing something that you're scared of, but even in that in the presence of that fear it doesn't mean not to. being afraid it means yeah, it doing it mean even though you're afraid <laughs> yeah it's like i'm brave i can do it i'm not scared then i'd say to someone they're full of you know what but they may not be wise if that's what they're saying they may not be using their wisdom in that case <laughs> right <laughs> but so yeah courage so, is doing the right thing i guess because you want to use it for positive so it's doing something even though it might be hard even though it might be scary even though it might be a difficult journey that's yeah correct. even just using your voice you know if you have to whether it's like teaching your children a hard truth right tough love it's kind of hard but or telling somebody if they're doing something wrong whether it's somebody you know and really respect or what if it's a stranger on the street and you got to tell them, hey, stop doing that. You're hurting somebody or whatever it is, right? The so courage to stand up for, to stand up for others, really. That is something that mm -hmm. is incredibly important for all of us to stand up and speak out when we see injustice, right? That's a kind of courage. Yes, exactly. And that's, uh, that's courage that we would talk about our uh, warriors. People think our warriors are just like, they're soldiers. They go out and fight and kill and whatever and hope to come home that's not how our warriors were our warriors were to sacrifice for the benefit of the community because be even being a warrior you were given the gift by gizemani do that you were able to know how to and whatever it is um, battle strategy whatever right yeah or you had a skill you could shoot a bow and arrow really good yep. whatever the skill was right um you were to go out and stand up for your people and sacrifice yourself for your people if it meant that right and we still that's how our warriors should be today not like guys uh they're in a gang they're warriors no they're not our ancestors didn't go through all all this trial and tribulation for our young ones to run around in the streets hurting each other and stealing and killing and all that stuff it's not what our ancestors did it for but what our warriors did was to stand up for those who couldn't provide for themselves, speak for themselves, or fight for themselves. What animal shows courage? Which animal is the, is representing that? It's makwa, is the bear. The bear, the way I was taught, uh, the mother bear will protect her cubs, her young, from the male bears. And male bears are bigger. So the mama bear has to fight the male bear to the death if she has to. But... Um, so yeah, that takes courage. Even though she's scared, she's scared because, okay, this bear is bigger than me, but she's scared. She wants her young to survive and live on, right? How are, are, how are her cubs going to survive if they don't have the mother to teach them? Um, but yeah, see, there's that, that courage to stand up and do what she has to do, but 
in the presence of that fear, mm -hmm. right? Because that's that's a big bear you, you have to face, but you'll do it for your children, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> for the future. Sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Next on the list is honesty. That one seems pretty straightforward, but how do you teach about honesty? You know, um, you could ask me all these questions and next week it might be a little different. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, like the root of it is always the same in my eyes. Um, like to be honest, like I say inwardly, honest with myself. Um, you know, I did a good thing there. I did a bad thing here. Like, can we be honest with ourselves? But to be honest with others, it's, hey, I'll tell a white lie sometimes. Like, I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but... Um, I did something quite a few years ago that I had no idea what I did. But yeah, I said something in our language when I was very young. The word meant like you're cheap. Mm -hmm. How else can I say that? You're cheap with money. Right. Okay. The way I was taught, the word was meant scared. My, my sister told me that, and it was just a miscommunication. Yeah. But um, friends, friends of mine took me out to a fair. I was, I don't know what I was, 12, 13, 14, something like that. And I asked the, my, like my cousin, his partner, I asked her if we can go on a Ferris wheel. And she said no. And so I said this word to her, thinking I was saying, you're scared. And she, what I was saying was she was stingy. She didn't want to pay for the ride. That's what she was. She was mad. And then he was mad at me. And he's like, oh, my God. So later on, I found out oh, this word that I was taught was not the way it was supposed to be the way I was trying to say it to her. So actually, I hadn't seen her for quite a few years. Then I ran into her back home on the res uh, a few years ago. So I went up and I talked to her and she totally forgot about it because it was quite a few years ago, but I talked to her and I told her exactly what happened and how I understood the word. So, and I, and I apologized to her. And for me that, like, I had to be honest with her. Like I wasn't telling her, yeah, you're cheap, you're stingy. You, you don't want to go and take me on the Ferris wheel. I was just trying to tease her to say she was scared because it was such a big Ferris wheel. But I heard her and I heard her partner, my cousin, which didn't go over well, but I, I, I had to be honest with myself, right? But I also had to be honest with her because may, she, she said she forgot. Maybe she forgot. Uh, she said she forgot. But you know what? For me, like, I've been carrying around that that for how many years? And it's like, being okay. honest is being true with what your responsibility in a situation was. Like, let's say, you know, you have an argument with a friend or a family member. And you walk away and you're like, it's all their fault and it's always them and I do everything right. But a, a kind of honesty to say, okay, maybe I played a role in it as well. Maybe, maybe it wasn't just all them. Maybe it was, maybe I had some responsibility. Yeah. That kind of maybe honesty. I, maybe I helped it along a little bit. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I didn't make the right choices in, in how I do that. <laughs> but I had to be honest with myself because when I saw her, that's it. I had to tell myself, okay, you know what? Just go up and explain and apologize. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause yeah, I carried that around for nothing really. <laughs> right. How many yeah. years I carried that around feeling bad that uh, once I understood what the word meant, it's like, Oh man, I really did that to her. <laughs> yeah. What animal is considered the honest animal? Honesty represented. It's represented by Sabe and Sabe is uh, that's our word for sabe. That's English is Bigfoot um, or Sasquatch. It's a hairy man. That's Sasquatch. That's a, a West Coast. Uh, that's their language. I'm not exactly sure which. Here, language if, if you were in Manitoba, it would be sabe. Sabe, yeah. Sabe. sabe. So why is sabe about honesty? Uh, the way I was taught sabe is. Um, well, first off, Sabe is the only one that goes to from the physical world to the spirit world in, in, uh, in an actual form. Okay. Um, 
when Sabe comes here, it's that hairy man full of hair. But when Sabe crosses over and goes through that doorway, it becomes a like a human being, whether it's male or female. That's how I was taught Sabe was. But um, when Sabe presents himself or herself to you, um, what they're doing is they're teaching you about honesty because Sabe is, um, you can't hide anything from Sabe. Sabe has the ability to look right through you to make you feel vulnerable. So there's no use, right? Like reading your mind, like Sabe knows what your thoughts and intentions are? Sabe knows everything about you, all your history, what you've done good, bad, or ah. at the time why Sabe presents itself, something of very um, uh, huge importance at that time, Sabe will present himself or herself to you. And then that's where you have to search, like with that honesty, you can't hide, so you have to present it. Now, Sabe is, that's how our, the way I always thought our, our grandmothers and grandfathers are helpers. When they present themselves, you have work to do. So if Sabe appears perhaps in a dream or something, then maybe you need to look at what have I not been really honest with myself about? And yes. what have I not been true to myself about? That's what Sabe yeah. is trying to tell you to do is look a little deeper. Yes. Yep. The next one is humility. Humility is like being humble. How does that work? Yeah. Being humble. Um, being humble with yourself, um, <clears throat> like, say you do something really good for the community. You don't walk out there and, like, today they would post it all over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter <laughs> and Twitter and whatever else is out there. Yep. Um, you don't go around patting yourself on the back, stuff like that. I did this. I did that. Yeah, I did it all myself. That, that's not, <laughs> that's the opposite of being humble, right? Um, being humble is helping in any way you can, helping somebody else, right? Doing it in a good way, but not looking for reward as in like a monetary reward or a physical reward, right? The actual reward for you, for the being humble part, that's how like in, a, in our uh, teachings, we say, be nice, be humble to other people and help each other, right? So that like we're not all on um, the different levels of, oh, he's better, he's a doctor, he's better, or no, she's a janitor, she's not, she's a lesser human being. That's not how we were taught we are. It doesn't matter what you are, we're all the same. And that, like being humble that way, like we're all the same, right? It doesn't you, matter where you are, how much money you earn, you're not worth any more than somebody who earns. Yeah, less money. I'm a man. That's that thing. I'm a man, she's a woman, or I'm young, you're old, I'm tall, you're short. You know, none of that stuff matters. It's it's how we are on the inside. And being humble is, like, I don't walk around saying, oh, yeah, I'm better than you, I'm better than him, I'm better than, I'm not better than anybody else, and nobody else is better than me. Like, to me, it's not a race, right, the way I understand about being humble. Um, it's not a race, but we, we have to uh, acknowledge within ourselves, right? We all got to start from somewhere right like yeah uh, what's it you, you can't run before you learn to walk right um you got to take those steps and learn in a good way the way i was taught but um being humble you, you have to know that you're at a certain time like you, you can be in a certain position and th that humbleness um is, is represented by my ingot which is the wolf and that's what we we use to talk about for being humble that humility the the structure the hierarchy in the wolf family because of the pack that they have yeah everybody has people. a role yeah everybody has a role it's alpha male alpha female and then the omegas but all the way down they're at a certain place right in that structure and everybody has a job to do right you, you can't have the the omegas the ones at the bottom leading the pack it doesn't work that way because the, the leaders were given the gift of being the alphas, right? And so they know how to lead the group. Um, but that doesn't but, make them more important than somebody no. with a different job within that group. One of the if, wolves that caring for the, 
the, the little ones. If, if the pack was all alphas, they wouldn't survive, right? They'd be fighting all the time. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. We'll do it my way. You know, that's how important the Omega role is, right? It's, it's very important. Every role is important. But when you're Omega, you, you have to be, uh, you have to know your place, right? You, you can't be the alpha. It's a bit confusing when you say that because it's like everyone is equal, but know your place is sometimes used as an insult to people like, hey, know your place, stay in your line. But I don't and think that's what this means. It means know no. your value, know your contribution. And yeah. that goes back to the respecting and loving yourself because this is what I do. And it's a it's it's worthy. It's got value. Yeah, exactly. Like if, if I'm in a ceremony, <clears throat> okay, I'm 53 years old. I know what I've done traditionally. Like I've done a lot of ceremony and I've participated in a lot of ceremony. But if I know someone who's like say in their 60s or 70s, who has done way more ceremony than me, but performs different ceremonies that I haven't earned the right yet, who am I to sit in that ceremony and say, okay, I'm gonna lead, I'm the top elder here. Uh, that's knowing my place. Right. right? It doesn't mean anything about your value. It means recognizing yes. what level of wisdom you have or what talents you have and what someone else has. That's a very mm -hmm. different way to look at it, for sure. Yeah. The final teaching is truth. And, you know, it kind of feels like we talked about that already because wouldn't honesty and truth be kind of the same thing? What is, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. Now, if I ask you to explain truth to me, I would use explain truth i guess there's a few different ways i'd look at it i mean truth being just not lying telling you what i believe to be correct mm -hmm. um but also in you know we've been talking a lot about yourself so the truth to yourself is maybe if we use that last example is the truth is um you know what maybe i'm not an alpha maybe maybe i'm a really strong member of the pack but i'm not the leader of the pack so there's a lot of different ways to like a truth how do you yeah explain? you know I, I like to use a like a coffee cup or <clears throat> a ginger ale can okay <laughs> so we're all sitting in a circle there's 10 of us in a circle and i say okay explain that what what's in the middle of the circle you're gonna have at least eight different opinions of what's in the middle. Someone might just say, oh, it's a can, pop can. And I would say, oh, you know what? I see uh, 24 grams of sugar or whatever it is in there, right? I see something so, green. I see yeah. something tin. Yeah. What's somebody going to say on the other side of it? Oh, I see Canada dry. And if <laughs> I'm on this side and I'm not sure because it's just green, they're speaking their truth, right? But I'm like, okay, are they being honest with me? Or are they actually speaking the truth? Is it really Canada dry on the other side? Ah, so where I'm looking right now, well, now I can see Canada dry. So that would be my truth. But when you spin it around, I'm seeing the, the new, well, nutritional label of the back of the can. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's green. So I, I would guess it's Canada dry if I just saw that part. But I don't Maybe. know for sure. Could be Sprite. Uh, could be Seven Up. Yeah, yeah, right. And it's like a coffee cup on the other one side. Someone on the other side of the circle will say, "Oh, I see the world's greatest dad." And yeah. it's like on the other side, and that's a guy saying it, right? On the other side, there's a woman saying, "Well, on this side, there's a handle. I see a handle on the cup." And it's like the guy who said world's greatest dad is like, "Is there really a handle there?" I would guess there is. Most coffee cups have a handle, but then the woman could also say. Yeah, are you sure it doesn't say world's greatest mom on there? So truth is coming from your own perspective. Is that what you're saying? It, it could be our own perspective. Yes, because there's, ah. is there just one truth out there? Look, I always say when, when there's an argument between two people or two groups or whatever it is, there's always three sides to that story. There's one side, there's the other side, but then in the middle, there's the truth, right? Because one group will have their version of the truth and the other group will have their version of the truth. But then in the middle Somewhere of that truth part, 
that third part, there's the truth, how it really happened, what really happened. So it's hard. Like, I don't like um, <clears throat> people put videos. Oh, look, the cops are arresting this indigenous person because of uh, whatever they're abusing them. It's like, well, I only seen a little part of that video, but uh, I don't like to say, oh, yeah, that's wrong. And then I start blaming the cops. It's like, I don't know the whole story. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. And it's hard for me to, I, I, don't, I don't waste my time even getting into the argument about it because I've never seen the whole thing or I wasn't there. So you so serve your, have, just, your judgment if you don't know the, the full story, mm -hmm. the full story. Yes, and then then it goes to like go, goes to trust for me, right? Like I trust the teachings that I've learned over the years because I trust the elders that I learned from. <clears throat> um, are people telling the truth usually? And some people might stretch it a bit. We we were at a back home a long time ago. We were at a social on our reserve, and uh, someone. It was one night, uh, Wayne Gretzky, he had injured his foot, and it was a big deal at the time. So they started talking about it, and it went around the whole thing, the, the dance. When we got to it, by the time it got to us, Wayne Gretzky, oh, he was being traded. He's selling, the, they're selling this hockey team, and they're, oh, man, there was so much stuff like made Like that up. game of telephone when you're a kid, and the right? rumor goes around, and you don't yeah. even recognize it by the end. Yeah, and, and then it's like, okay, how did that start out? Well, even like our legends and stuff, it, there's a little bit of truth in there at the beginning, how it all started out, right? Now, is it embellished? And yeah, we could go on and on about that one. What animal represents the truth? It's the turtle, Mikinac, that's how we say it. Yeah, Mikinac, because they have the ability to, like they, they go inside them their shell for protection, right? But we see it as a symbolically, like we're able to go inside ourselves and look at ourselves. But the way I've heard some elders talk about this is truth. Like to know what is truth is to know all the seven teachings. The truth is sort of the base that all the rest stand on. Like once you've done all the other ones, then you are, you're being true to yourself. If you're, if, if you're, you're loving yourself, yourself love, respect, respect you, yourself, yeah honesty humility yeah. that would be the truth yeah it sounds like a lot of of work to keep in mind every day so how does somebody you know take this and then try to try to apply it practically to their life how do you start you know what it it um it's funny because like i've taught people the seven teachings adults okay i've taught adults and then a week or so later, they're coming back to me. Okay, what does this mean again? What animal was this one? What was that one? And they're all writing it down. And it's like, you got to remember our, our culture and our history was oral. So what happened was, um, I guess it's kind of like going to church every Sunday, if that's what people do. We would keep saying this stuff to ourselves over and over, teaching ourselves. Telling it to your children. And telling it to our children but then also quizzing them right I, li I like to do that because that's how i was taught i'd ask like okay what direction did we start in again east ding, ding, ding. <laughs> 50 points for aaron <laughs> only because right. i've spent enough time with you eric that i'm starting some of it's starting to sink in finally <laughs> right see and that's how we learn but it's a good like remember i said i like things that have more than one use yeah. so these seven teachings when you're when you're speaking them out loud or in your mind you're going over the seven teachings and the animals what they mean what the purpose is you're praying at the same time but you're you're educating yourself but you're praying at the same time and what i do um like say somebody has anxieties about something there's that thing you could use i don't know what it's called but it's like four points or five points you know hmm. Like five, point out five blue things around you. Four, point out four sounds you hear or whatever, whatever yeah. the, the four. To try to, to try to ground yourself if you're feeling yes. anxious. Yeah. You, you, then you're distracting yourself from that anxiety, right? You got to ground yourself, which even that like is huge for me. It's like the way we would say it is, you know what? You got to get back to your roots. Go back to mother earth. 
right? It's the exact same. Just we we just say it differently, right? What you said, ground yourself. You got to ground yourself, right? We got to get back to Mother Earth because that's that's our mother, right? What happens usually? We always run to our mother because there's that love and that warmth there, right? And that protection protection from from our mother. But Mother Earth, ground yourself, right? So I always say. I tell people, go through the seven teachings. Well, explain them to me again. Okay, let's go. We start to help. So now there's a, uh, that's what I love about the double. Somebody has anxiety, go through the seven teachings. So they're going through it. They're, they're being grounded, right? They're getting back to their roots, going back to Mother Earth. They're also taking in that lesson at the same time. They're taking in the lesson, but then they're praying at the same time. So Because that's what our people would always do, right? Pray, pray. Not just... Uh, you're about to get in a car crash and it's oh my god that, that's not praying <laughs> yeah <laughs> or i have an exam tomorrow please let me pass <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's all but, that's not up to base eric you know you and i we have talked about these things many times and you teach classes where i get to spend a couple of days with you but our time is going to be running out now so i wanted to just leave people with one last thing if you uh, are interested in learning more about Indigenous culture, whether you're Indigenous and you're going back to your roots, or maybe you're not Indigenous and you're seeking a way to work on reconciliation, and one way is through culture and understanding. Um, is powwow something that anyone can visit? Do you need to have an invitation? Do you need to be Indigenous to go to powwow? No, everybody's uh, more than welcome to attend powwow. Um, Actually, the U of M powwow was coming up soon. Their grad, they always do a traditional powwow for grad. But yeah, there's lots of powwows all over the province, actually. We, we call it the powwow trail. There's usually dancers will get ready. Every weekend, they're traveling to a different place. You'd be gone for a couple of months at a time. Um, powwow, you're more than welcome to enter. But there's uh, like protocols in there that you should learn. So it'd, it'd be really good. Like if you can attend the powwow, go to a powwow and whoever's organizing, just ask them, you know, pass the back. Ask them how to, what the rules are and how not to. Yeah. What can I do? What can't I do? Yeah. Cause they'll, um, they'll actually even let you participate in the powwow. They'll do a, a round dance. So anybody can go up and dance and join in the ceremony. So, but That's, there's. It's a yeah, good way to, to, to learn more about Indigenous culture, but to also remembering the teachings that you need to be respectful and you need to make sure you're asking an elder. You've already taught us that. If you're not sure, ask an elder. Yeah. What should I be doing? How do I make sure that I'm not doing something that offends people at ceremony? But yeah. people are ask, still welcome. Ask somebody that you trust, that you think has a knowledge on it um but do it in a good way but but yeah if you go to powwow don't call their regalia nice outfit or a nice costume nice costume no yeah, don't say people costume. are not dressing up in a costume right it, it's not halloween here <laughs> these yeah. are traditional regalia like eagle feathers and there's so many different uh, parts of animals that they use in in their regalia and as you've taught us today, there's a lot of ceremony involved in and a lot of stories and teaching behind them. So we need yes. to show respect and love and wisdom, maybe some courage to go to your first powwow. Right, right. But Honesty even just, that you don't know actually very much about perhaps what you're seeing, the humility re to respect, and respect. Like say my fan, when I was given this, my wife gave it to me as a gift. I was preparing the Sundance. This was about 27 years ago, 28 years ago. She got she got it for me as a gift, gave it to me, but then I had to fast with it. With our sacred items, like we'll go out and we'll fast with it to earn the right to use it traditionally. So yeah, go out and fast for four days and four nights. That's a that's a big part of it. Yeah. So, so all of those things is just paying attention. Well, we're coming to the end, Eric, and I know. There's so much more we could talk about, but I really appreciate mm -hmm. you giving us uh, just this first little little bit of lesson. And, and right, we need a part two. We do. We maybe we probably need a part six. So, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> we'll have to look at that. Thank you, Eric, for being here. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody else who was joining us here today. If you're interested in knowing more about your union or if you don't have a unionized workplace and you'd like to know more about uh, what we can do, we do all kinds of things like this to help benefit our members. You can go onto our website at ufcw832.com. Thank you, Eric. And thank, thank you, you Miigwech, Miigwech for having me. I can learn in way Maganaduk, all my relations. Um, yeah, that's the way we always finish off, all my relations. I will let you finish with that then, all my relations. Good night. Oh, Miigwech. <laughs>